Hello, welcome to the Friday, June 25th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In our Defending Web Application Security class, uh, when we cover uh, session uh, cookies, I often mention that, hey, these cookies are as valuable as a username and a password, and you have to defend them accordingly. Looks like the bad guys have also been listening. Xavier notes that in addition to usernames and passwords, cookies apparently are being traded online. Of course, malware can always be used to steal these cookies from an infected system. And if the sessions aren't properly protected in a particular web application, they may be valid for a significant amount of time, which then enables them to be traded. And talking about cookies and weak sessions, Checkpoint published a fairly extensive report looking at weaknesses in various components of Atlassian's software. Atlassian, if you're not familiar with the company, they do make software that is commonly used to organize software projects. There are a number sort of project management tools and the like that are part of their portfolio. So at its heart, of course, a compromise of their software would compromise a company's software development process. And with that, essentially, your good old and these days highly popular supply chain attack. Many of the vulnerabilities outlined in Checkpoint's report are attacking sessions and session cookies and are allowing impersonation of users, also including vulnerabilities like, for example, session fixation and uh, cross-site scripting being used to steal cookies as well as cross-site request forging, then being used to trick victims uh, to perform certain actions on the attacker's behalf. If you're using any of the Atlassian products, uh, patches have been released, but you probably do want to take a look at the report that Checkpoint published. It's very detailed and verify that these vulnerabilities are addressed, also that any software that you are building doesn't include these particular vulnerabilities. And we have an interesting vulnerability in Dell's support assistant and bias. Uh, The problem here is that first of all, Dell's support assistant, which comes pre-installed on many Dell Windows systems, has the ability to interact with the system's bias. The purpose of this is to be able to recover a compromised operating system or to even update the BIOS itself. Sadly, the connection to support assistant has some flaws in its TLS configuration. And secondly, a buffer overflow in support assistant could allow an attacker to execute arbitrary code with support assistance help and given the privileges that support assistant has in managing the bias it could then be used to install malicious firmware on a vulnerable system to patch this vulnerability an update of the support assistant is not sufficient you need to update the system's bias and well uh, maybe do it without the support assistant uh, just uh, to be sure that you're not falling for a bad update Eclipsium, the company that found these vulnerabilities and notified Dell of the vulnerability, also recommends a couple other mitigating techniques. For example, disable HTTPS boot and also change uh, the uh, bias connect settings to not allow support assistant to actually connect to it. HTTPS boot is actually sort of a newer form of uh, the good old uh, Pixie boot where you were able to download uh, operating system images and such via TFTP, usually sort of in more traditional uh, systems. HTTPS boot replaces TFTP with HTTPS, which is uh, a good step in the right direction. But then again, it wasn't quite properly configured here. And Joseph Rodriguez from IOActive uh, came up with an interesting new attack against ATMs, automatic uh, teller uh, machines. Now we have seen in the past a couple of uh, network attacks and such against these systems, sometimes also using support codes via the 
keyboard uh, built in to ATMs in order to launch what's often referred to as a jackpotting attacks, where essentially you trick the ATM into dip dispensing cash. The latest vulnerability found by Joseph involves NFC. Now, these days, of course, and I actually have to admit I haven't used an ATM in a while, but uh, you are able to withdraw money from an ATM using your cellular phone. And that, of course, then often uses NFC in order to authenticate itself and in order uh, to then uh, withdraw the money. But this NFC component now increases the attack surface of the ATM and uh, Joseph found out how to exploit this and get the ATM to dispense cash using a modified NFC firmware on an Android phone. At least one vendor's ATMs are vulnerable. Uh, no details have been released yet. Supposedly there is going to be a webinar next week with some additional details. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And again, if you like this podcast, please let your friends know, post on social media, leave a good review with your favorite podcast vendor. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.